Welcome back to Nuclear Proliferation Explained. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is how hydrogen bombs work. You may also know of these as fusion bombs or thermonuclear bombs. All the same thing. They are a specific type of nuclear weapon. That means that a hydrogen bomb is not synonymous with a nuclear bomb. It's a specific type, a type that is much more powerful and much more potent than the other types of nuclear weapons that we've discussed before. Nevertheless, I hope you are familiar with those basics that we've discussed already, because we are taking those basics and we're going a step further to get a much larger explosive. The key innovation with hydrogen bombs is that they are multiple stage devices. Here, I'm going to be focusing on the teller Ulam configuration, which is the standard configuration across all nuclear weapons within the US's arsenal. The general ideas that we're going to be talking about here would apply to other types of nuclear weapons, though. In practice, the hydrogen bombs that all countries use are two stages. There's a primary stage within the teller Ulam device, which is a boosted implosion weapon. The secondary stage is a bunch of hydrogen with a fuel core. The primary device, that boosted implosion weapon, causes fusion down below and then fission in the secondary device. And all of that fusion and fission in the secondary device creates a much, much larger explosion than you would have if you just had the primary part of the weapon. Let's take a look inside. On the left, we have the primary stage of the weapon. This is the same type of boosted implosion bomb that we had seen last time. We have a shell with a conventional explosive, a yellow plutonium pit, and inside of that yellow plutonium pit, we have hydrogen, a mixture of deuterium and tritium. When the plutonium compresses together, that undergoes fission, which causes the deuterium and tritium to undergo fusion, which causes more fission within the plutonium pit. This is not what makes it a thermonuclear or a hydrogen bomb. Yes, there is hydrogen inside of the boosted implosion device, but it is not a thermonuclear weapon or a hydrogen weapon. In fact, the true hydrogen part of the hydrogen bomb is now there on the right. This is the secondary stage of the device. Think of this as just a large chunk of hydrogen. Again, a mixture of deuterium and tritium. Those two isotopes of hydrogen naturally do not want to fuse together. They need lots of heat and lots of pressure to be coaxed into it. And that is the purpose of the primary stage of the device. You fire off a normal, as it were, nuclear weapon to create lots of heat and direct lots of pressure at that secondary stage. When you do that, the deuterium and tritium now want to fuse together, which is going to cause a lot of energy. So much so that we are in an order of magnitude perhaps stronger than we would be otherwise. But the designers had one more trick up their sleeves. Think about what's going on with all of that hydrogen. When it fuses together, it creates neutrons. Those neutrons, as it currently stands, aren't actually doing anything. But nothing stops you from putting more nuclear material into the core of the secondary device, which those neutrons can hit to cause fission. Thus, recapping the entire weapon, we have something crazy. Bear with me for a moment. We have fission causing fusion in the primary device, which then causes further fission still in the primary device. And all of that is directed toward the secondary device, where we have all of that energy causing fusion, which causes fission. And you put it all together and you get a very, very large explosion. Here's what some of those early devices look like. This is Greenhouse George. It was more of a proof of concept of a hydrogen bomb than a true hydrogen bomb. With a true hydrogen bomb, you're having the majority of the energy being created by that secondary stage. This being a proof of concept actually was more like a boosted implosion device that we had seen before, with just some of the secondary device being present to test out whether it would work. Then the United States actually was sure that it would work and started doing the real thing. This is Ivy Mike, 
Ivy Mike, again, in some ways is a proof of concept. Rather than being a real bomb, this was more like a bomb factory that they had made, which was very, very large and therefore completely impractical for the purposes of actually using as a weapon. But it did demonstrate that having a full-on thermonuclear weapon was possible. And so after they had the test of the Ivy Mike, they could then go on and do the real thing, which was Castle Barocco. This was the first thermonuclear test from the United States. I mentioned up front that the true innovation of hydrogen bombs is having multiple stages. But in practice, the weapons that countries deploy only have two stages. Still, in principle, it is possible to go beyond the second stage. The Soviet Union, in fact, did this. The Tsar Bomba is the largest weapon ever detonated. It had three stages. It was relatively impractical, and so the Soviet Union didn't do much with it, but it is the largest explosion that mankind has ever created. You could take things a step further with what is jokingly called a backyard bomb. This is the brainchild of Edward Teller, he of the Teller Ulam design. The idea behind a backyard bomb is that you have so many stages chained together that it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If I detonate that bomb in my backyard, it will kill you because we'll have such a large explosion, it won't matter at that point. Whether you're in my backyard or you're on the exact opposite side of the world, we're all going to die at that point. To wrap things up, let's just look at who has these weapons. Seven countries do. The United States was first in 1954, and most recently we have North Korea in 2017. It takes some practice to get this right, as you will see that all of these countries had tested other weapons before they tested a hydrogen bomb. And that's because, again, hydrogen bombs have to take a normal nuclear weapon and go one step further with it. So if you're looking at the United States and North Korea, there's about a 10-year difference between the first nuclear weapon and then the development of a thermonuclear weapon. And in India's case, we have about 24 years. You will notice that three countries that have had nuclear weapons are not on this hydrogen bomb list. Those are Israel, South Africa, and Pakistan. Pakistan just does not have them, period. That one's easy. South Africa, of course, gave up their weapons, and at the time that they did, they had yet to develop hydrogen bombs. So that one is also fairly easy. Israel probably has hydrogen bombs, but we don't have true confirmation of that yet. There's a whistleblower who is giving us good indications that that is the case. So if you had to put money on it, it's probably worth betting on the fact that Israel does have hydrogen bombs but it's not known like it is the case with these other seven countries. And that wraps everything up here. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you next time. Take care.